you're able to put out a 30 minute video on how to change a light bulb and people watch for 25 minutes while another channel can show you how to do that in 30 seconds, which one do you think YouTube is gonna continue to promote? Hey, Creator Crew, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell. Don't forget to turn on mobile notifications so you're alerted to future content here on Creator Fundamentals. So often in the YouTube community, we talk about the importance of value to have success, to find success here on on YouTube, you need to make videos that deliver value. In fact, that was the slogan here on Creator Fundamentals early on, deliver your value to your audience and that is going to help you grow. But that got me thinking, does YouTube care about value? So let me give you an example of why this has been on my mind. Two videos, one published about how to add a subscribe watermark to a video. Now YouTube is constantly changing, doing tutorials of things on YouTube is kind of a repetitive practice because YouTube changes things. So if I put out a video in 2020 about how to do something, there's a good chance that in 2021, I'm gonna have to put out a new video on the same topic because YouTube has moved things around. So let's say I put out that video in 2020 and it gets an average view duration of three minutes. That means people are hanging around for three minutes to figure out how to add a subscribe watermark to their YouTube videos. Now, during those three minutes, they're directed on how to do that in YouTube studio according to how YouTube was set up in 2020. All right, so that 2020 video is keeping people around for about three minutes, but at this point, they are running into a roadblock because the directions are no longer valid. So initially, when that video was published, we put out a relevant topic that people were interested in. So as new content comes out on the topic, YouTube seems to look at those videos that keep people watching the longest, but is watching the longest really a true measurement of value have you ever been trying to get something done and maybe an alert from TikTok or youtube pops up and the next thing you know 45 minutes have passed and you're not getting any work done but you've watched a dozen videos is that value if youtube is successfully able to hijack your attention and distract you from the work you were trying to get done did they provide value or did they simply find a way to hack your attention? So back to that same topic. In 2021, I put out a video on the same topic, how to add a subscribe watermark to your YouTube videos. But that video is only pulling in two minutes and 30 seconds of view duration. Now that video is going to be much more relevant and it's going to provide much more value to the people who are actually trying to get that thing done. But YouTube doesn't see it that way. YouTube looks at the 2020 video and says, hey, this video is keeping people watching longer. It must be the better of the two videos. Wait, Dan, are you saying all you need is a higher average view duration and you're going to get more views than other videos? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's definitely more complicated than that, but I'm just using this as an example to illustrate attention versus value. And you can even make the further argument that that second video was even more concise and to the point and helped people get to exactly the information they were looking for as quickly as possible. But YouTube doesn't reward creators for being concise. A person can only watch the video for a certain amount of time and then click thumbs up or leave a comment. With all things being equal, which video is gonna do better? The one getting three minutes or the one getting two and a half minutes? So in order to force YouTube to get the most relevant video out to your audience, you have to game the system and go out of your way to keep people watching longer than that previous video. Is that value? If I have to add fluff or take the long way around to giving people the answer that they're looking for, am I really doing a service to that audience? This has always been the paradox of how-to content. You simply cannot help people solve problems you need to be able to help people solve problems in a creative and entertaining way such that they hang around longer than they actually need to to get the thing done that they're trying to get done. And I know YouTube has been testing some satisfaction metrics, but I truly feel like more needs to be done above and beyond comments and thumbs up or thumbs down. If somebody's able to solve a problem for somebody in two minutes, should they be rewarded over the person who took five minutes to provide the same information? That two minute video ultimately provides more value, but YouTube isn't measuring value. In fact, YouTube doesn't care about value. YouTube cares about attention. Good, bad, or otherwise, the longer you can hold somebody's attention, the more YouTube is going to reward you. So if you're able to put out a 30 minute video on how to change a light bulb and people watch for 25 minutes, while another channel can show you how to do that in 30 seconds, which one do you think YouTube is gonna continue to promote? Now I know there's gonna be people that argue if you can entertain somebody for 25 minutes with a process as mundane as changing a light bulb, you deserve to get more attention. 
but I think that kind of overshadows the point that I'm trying to make. Channels that create content that are simply professional time wasters should not be promoted over channels that are actually trying to give people what they need as quickly as possible. That's just my opinion. I would love to hear from you. What do you think about this? Do you think that YouTube favors entertainment above value? Do you think that treating those two minute videos lesser than the four minute videos is a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think YouTube should be able to reward channels that provide concise information? And more importantly, do you think a new metric needs to exist to be able to measure that satisfaction to determine who's doing the best job here on YouTube? I'd love to know your thoughts, so make sure you add them to the comments below. And hey, while we're talking about keeping people's attention, we all know that YouTube favors channels that get a lot of watch time. One of the greatest ways to get more watch time here on YouTube is to live stream. This video has been sponsored by Restream. If you're looking to take your live streams to a professional level, then I highly recommend Restream. You can go over to tryrestream.today and get set up with one of their paid tiers. At the professional level, you're going to get access to Restream Studio Pro, which is going to let you customize your graphics and logo so that your live stream stands out from the crowd. And even better, if you choose to pay yearly, you're going to save 20% off your subscription. Plus, if you use my referral link, tryrestream.today, you're going to save an additional 15% off that already discounted subscription. Go live and level up by visiting tryrestream.today. Hey, don't let the learning stop here. I'm gonna put a video on screen now that can teach you even more about how YouTube works and how you can use it to grow your YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video.